Leupold is an odd company. Most of their optics are literal antiques that persist pretty much completely on the strength of Leupold's name and the quality of their glass. They've been around for over 100 years, and so have most of their scope designs. But every once in a while, the Beaverton-based company gets blackout drunk on high-gravity IPAs and decides to make something cool. When Leupold goes on a bender, it becomes a totally different company who I will refer to as Drunk Leupold. And that's when you get experimental stuff like the Mark IV CQT, the Hammer, the VXL, the LCO, and the D-Evo. This video will primarily be about the Leupold LCO, Leupold Carbine Optic. The Leupold Leupold Carbine Optic, really guys? The LCO only lasted a few years before being discontinued, but at least it lasted longer than the D-Evo, which was an offset periscopic prism scope designed to be used in conjunction with the LCO. We'll get to that one in a bit. The LCO is a big red dot with a closed emitter. It has glass on both sides, something you don't get with all wannabe EOTechs like the Sightmarks or the Holosun 510. It does have a smooth outer shell, so you don't get any protuberances in your field of view, like most of the big hooded red dots but with an even lower profile, since this doesn't have a secondary armored shell. The LCO is big, and it's also heavy. This thing is made out of a solid block of aluminum, comes in at about 9.5 ounces, so right around EOTech, XPS, or EXPS territory. The LCO sits at the absolute co-witness height, the same as an EOTech XPS. I've seen it referred to as lower third, though, for example, on Unity Tactical's website, but that doesn't seem to be right. The LCO does not have a quick release mount, but the large quarter inch nut is definitely better than the small hex bolt like on an EOTech XPS3. Honestly, neither of these has a very impressive mounting interface, but the LCO has way more grip on the rail, so it should be comparatively bombproof. The LCO is powered by a transverse mounted CR123 battery. The brightness is controlled by a dial and it has an inset push button, press for on, hold for off. The LCO has 16 brightness settings, five of which are for night vision. 16 settings is a pretty wide spectrum of available brightness to find one that works for your environment, but it also is a little easier to dial on the fly compared to hammering on the buttons to cycle through 30 settings on an EOTech EXPS3. Battery life on the Leupold is advertised at 96 hours on maximum brightness. You'll rarely need it that high, but it's still only 1800 hours on low. The LCO does have an automatic shutoff and shake awake technology, which was originally pioneered by Leupold before corporate espionage floated it down the Columbia to Sig Sauer and then across the Pacific to Holosun. LCO owners typically report pretty solid real world battery life out of their optics. I suspect the aggressive auto off timer is really key here, as is the fact that you probably don't need to have it any higher than about three quarters of the way up. If this was going on a truck gun or an officer's patrol rifle, I think the battery life would be pretty damn short since it would stay on almost all the time. You have to weigh that versus the benefits of being able to grab the gun and go immediately without pushing any buttons. The short battery life is a real kick in the teeth because the LCO still has a noticeable refresh rate. It uses PWM brightness control like a shitty Vortex red dot. Holosun and SIG red dots don't do this. Not even an ancient piece of shit Bushnell TRS-25 does this. When the brightness is all the way up, it doesn't flicker, but the lower brightness settings are created by pulsing power instead of reducing it. That's not catastrophic, it's mostly just annoying. The LCO does have a more serious problem. If there's any incoming high angle light, you can see the entire emitter assembly reflected in the front lens. It's visible as a yellow gold smear extending down and to the sides of the dot, and it does not take a whole lot of light to manifest. This is easily the most annoying feature slash bug of the LCO. Now it's all the way off. A little bit of reflection like this makes sense on complex reticle optics like the Circle Dot MRO HD or the Steiner DRS 1X. It doesn't make sense on this. If you shine a light into the optic from the front, you can very clearly see the gold traces leading to the emitter that caused this problem. Those really should not be exposed like that. Night vision performance of the LCO is a mixed bag. Light transmission through the big panes of high quality Leupold glass is pretty good, albeit not on par with Neotech. Okay, nothing is, but I'd also rate the LCO a bit lower than the Aimpoint T2. I haven't had them side by side, but in previous tests the T2 was nearly indistinguishable from the Eotech, whereas the LCO is clearly lacking. The bigger problem is that the NV brightness settings are not well spaced. The LCO has five settings that work very well in extremely dark conditions, but no settings that work well in mixed lighting. The five NV settings are all way too dim, and the lowest daylight setting is usable but blooms pretty badly. 
compared to a Holosun HS515 GM that has a good spread of intensity across its 4 NV settings, the LCO is pretty lackluster. Honestly, the LCO performs worse under NV than either version of the Delta Point Pro. All in all, the LCO is a pretty good red dot. It has some peculiarities that were really tough to justify at its original retail price of $900. It later dropped down to an MSRP of $700, pricing it about on par with an EOTech EXPS3. The LCO got discontinued before Leupold ever made an improved second generation model, and that's a shame. There aren't a lot of good American-made red dots on the market. There aren't even a lot of decent ones. However, the D Evo that you often see paired with the LCO definitely deserved what it got. The D Evo or Devo is an offset prism scope designed to be mounted behind the LCO or a similar height red dot. The IP sits just below the line of the red dot window and the objective lens hangs off to the right side of the gun. The idea is that you can instantly go from looking at your red dot to looking at a 6 power scope without moving your head, flipping over a magnifier, or changing magnification on an LPVO. The transition is faster in theory than a piggyback or offset red dot, faster than a magnifier, and faster than a scope throw lever. You motherless son of a whore. In practice, your eye placement has to be so perfect that it doesn't really work. The Devo is like a magic eye painting. When you really nail that perfect head position, it all comes together in a pretty impressive way, but generally it's incredibly hard to use. Oh, 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 yeah! <laughs> I don't see it. The Devo offers a pretty impressive amount of magnification in a small package. It's nominally a fixed power 6x20 scope. You can usually make some educated guesses about how an optic will work based on a few basic numbers. The 6x20 means a small exit pupil, but the periscopic prismatic design of the Devo means it's even smaller than you think. Come on. Fuck, it's too dark, I can't see shit through this thing. It's possible that a 4x20 would have given a much more forgiving exit pupil, which would have made it easier to use in dim light, and would have given it a more forgiving eye box. The eye relief is also very short, but it's okay for where you're expected to put the scope, way back on the rail. Basically everything about the Devo is cumbersome and annoying. It hangs off to the right side of the gun, which makes it hard to fit your rifle into a case. You can block the scope with your support hand if you're a lefty. Lights and lasers can also get in the way. Also, the offset design means you need an offset zero, which is really weird and annoying to set up. You're intended to zero the optic at 200 yards, and the BDC reticle curves a bit to accommodate the converging zero. The combined weight of the LCO and the Devo is 23 ounces, and the cost of the Devo was over a grand. Paired with an LCO, the total system cost ended up being about 2,000 bucks when they were first available. $2,000 is the cost of a really good scope, a really good mount, and an offset or piggyback red dot. Boy, I can't see anything out of it. Low visibility, the red dot just better. The Devo is not a good scope for almost any purpose. From what I've heard, it was designed specifically for varminting, so it's no surprise it didn't catch on with the general public, and it got discontinued in short order. But why did Leupold discontinue the LCO? Well, it was really expensive, it was never all that popular, and it's a heavy brick with some odd features. But generally speaking, they probably discontinued it because Leupold discontinues everything. Nothing Leupold makes ever gets a Gen 2, so you have an interesting idea that's a little janky at launch, and instead of refining it further, they just pull the plug and go back to the comfortable world of lightweight scopes for your grandfather's hunting rifle. Leupold also has a habit of discontinuing good things immediately and making bad things forever. The LCO has of course been discontinued, but the bewilderingly bad Freedom Red Dot site is still being made. Leupold, as a company, makes no sense. Before the LCO, Drunk Leupold also made an ACOG competitor called the Hammer. At arm's length, the Hammer appears to be similar to a 4-power ACOG. However, the Hammer weighs a little bit more, and it's a 4x24, whereas the 4X ACOG has a 32mm objective for better light-gathering properties and a bigger exit pupil. ACOGs also have fiber-optic and tritium illumination, which provides impressive reticle brightness even in the daytime. 
The hammer has traditional battery illumination, which doesn't get very bright. However, the hammer was always intended to be used with a Delta Point micro red dot mounted on top. It was sold as a package deal with an extra bolt-on shroud to protect the Delta Point. In my limited range time behind the hammer, I was impressed by the glass. It seems better than an ACOG. Maybe it's the coatings, but the hammer almost seemed impervious to glare from direct sunlight. Super clear image with a great horseshoe dot BDC reticle. Another product that really could have used a Gen 2. Unfortunately, the Gen 1 didn't sell too well because it was a heavier, more expensive ACOG, and it came to market before the widespread adoption of piggyback red dots. As they say, being ahead of your time is often as bad as being behind it. Loophold repeatedly makes products that people really want, but never at the same time they actually want them. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this channel and you'd like to support me directly, there's a link to a Subscribestar page in the video description. Most of these videos cost a lot of money to make and they don't generate any revenue, so I'm pretty much on a downward trajectory towards homelessness if you don't do something about it. No pressure. I love you. I'll see you next time.